All right, welcome everybody to a new segment. And here what I'm gonna do is look at the jet propulsion kind of case, all right? As you know, in the jet propulsion, I'm gonna get thrust and all, but in here, the geometry looks like it, so that's why it's called jet propulsion, all right? So let's take a look at it. I have myself a nice oil tank. And the dimension over here is given half a meter. And what I do is I have an opening, right one meter from the top surface and you can see it's fairly small opening so the oil is leaking from here and going out all right my question is if the oil and i gave you the specific gravity of oil is replaced with seawater i'm reconditioning this tank and i'm going to store seawater in it and i gave you the specific gravity which is heavier right so my question is what will happen to the velocity over here what will happen to the flow rate and what will happen to the the force that's exerted on this tank right and the thing that I want to say is this is called the thrust if I do the jet propulsion so one thing is these kind of questions uh, I'm experienced asking students in a classroom setting kind of doesn't uh, lend itself to being an easier question if I go ahead and ask you the velocity and the Q and the F uh, majority of the uh, students will be able to get it just right but when I ask this kind of question, like a more conceptual question, which the P exam will test you on, we kind of stumble a bit. And sometimes what happens is, I have uh, observed, students go use their logic, so they kind of freak out, I guess. Um, that doesn't bode well. So what we had to do is simply not panic and look at the formulas that we establish. All right? I go to the FE reference manual, page 187 for the 10th edition of the reference manual. And I simply copy paste myself the equations. It says that hey, V2 is equal to square root of 2gh. Okay? But what I want to tell you is please go ahead and try to do this uh, question on your own. Because when I do this, it's such a simple question. But in reality, that's not really like that. All right? So please go ahead and do, do it yourself. As you know, this is V times A, right? And the force is going to be. Q rho V2. Okay. So now, where is, so basically what I'm looking at is the, the, the way that I change things, that will be the density will change in the fluid, right? So looking at V2, I have two number, G is 9.81, H is 1. So do you see that the V is not a function of the fluid that I have? If I put a mercury here over versus oil, um, I'm going to get the same velocity out for a jet propulsion, right? But note that I'm looking at this at the time snapshot where this is not moving down, okay? If that moves down, that's a different case. And I have a, a lecture video on that. I'll put the link here so you can uh, visit that if you wish to, okay? Um, so that's what happens. So you can see that the part A, unless kind of A is gone, D is gone. They don't go up, okay? And you can see from, I'm only left with B and C, and obviously if the V is not going up, is the area is constant, so the Q is going to be the same as well. Okay? But what happens to the F force? So the Q is same, we said this is same. Density is, well, we said it's going up, right? Higher value, mathematics speaking. And V2 is the same. So then you're going to see that your force is going to go up. Okay? Um, and I actually went ahead and calculated for you, so I would like you to practice this for practice purposes. In this case, I'm going to get my V2 to be 4.4 meter per second. And I'm going to get Q to be 5.5 times 10 to the minus 3 meter cube per second. And this is the same between the oil and seawater. So these two will be the same for V2 and Q. But the force that I obtained myself is only calculated for using oil and I get myself 19.5 newtons. Thank you for watching this video.